I think Power Automate is one of the most powerful tools in your Microsoft suite to allow you to streamline your workflow. You can get data from your emails, put it straight into Planner. You can take information from a form and get a Teams notification with just the right data there to trigger you to go and read the output from the form. But one of the really big problems with Microsoft 365 is data flows through it in different formats. So what you see in a form that you type in may end up looking different when Power Automate sees it and may be needed in a different format when you place it into Planner. So what I'm going to show you today is a hack that will allow you to see data in one format, really quickly change that data to the format you require and then move it on using Power Automate and place it somewhere else. The best part of this is that hack's not going to require you to memorize lots of complex expressions. This one's for those of you who don't mind using a little bit of AI, but also want a bit of a guide on what to put in to get the best outputs. To keep things simple, here's a very basic form. I'm used to using it to create some data. You can see here I've got multi-line data and I've got some data in tick boxes. I've got a really simple flow here to catch that form when it gets submitted. You'll see it's worked catch the information on that form and then write it out in a compose. It's a really common pattern in Power Automate as you're building. So here you can see an example of the problem. I've been and got some data from a form. I've got some lovely multi-line information so I can probably pass that on quite easily. It looks like I put it in but here those options it comes with a load of gobbledygook around them. This is just how Power Automate stores data. But there's a really easy way that you can strip out what you don't want, keeping just what you do want, and format it ready for a next action. So I'll hit edit and show you how I built that compose. Now the first thing you will have spotted is I had two pieces of data landing in that compose. Each piece of data was picked from the get response details, i.e. the data on the form, and I just added in a couple of the questions. They're there for you to select. Let's just get rid of that first one because that all looked quite pretty. Okay. So here, if I just ran this, I would get that response with square brackets and speech marks. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab ChatGPT. Yes, you can use Copilot. That does work sometimes. Today, during this recording, it failed me badly. The beauty of Copilot is when you start to type something in like this, you'll see what I'm going to write in a minute, it already understands that you are in Power Automate. You can see here, I've tried some examples and it did not like it. So let's not use that. Let's go to ChatGPT. I'm going to type the same stuff in. Give me an expression which will strip out the characters I don't want from this string and store just the values. If you remember, we'd copied the output from that last run. We're just going to paste it in here. Remember it looked like that? Load of gobbledygook. So the additional information I am just going to put in here is before I put this prompt, which is a really simple prompt, I'm going to say, act as an expert in Power Automate, being specific there, give me advice on expressions I can use. And then I've said, give me the expression to strip out this nonsense. So I know from experience that replace is what I wanted to do. I also know that replace is a little bit fiddly in terms of its syntax. And I also know that replace can only replace one thing at a time. So one individual character type at a time. That's why what it's built is multiple replaces all nested to go through this character set and one by one remove what I don't want. So we're really close now within a few seconds to having something I can use. But there's a really important problem with this. This here is actual text. I know that what I'm going to need to do is pull in a piece of data from my form. So I'm just going to explain that and get it to adjust. There you go. So I want this expression, but I need to use a dynamic content from a form. Where should I put it? This is just if you're in any doubt. Do have those refinement conversations with AI. And again, within a few seconds, I've got an output that I can see here this is quite typical, this bit here. That is the output from an action called form response. Okay, So what we now know is we can replace this piece here and keep the rest of the expression. So let's just copy it. Let's go over here. And all we now need to do is get rid of that dynamic content, click on the expression below, paste in what ChatGPT gave us, go and grab those outputs because that's just some placeholder text. Make sure you select the right bit. What you're looking for is after that first bracket and before that first comma. Keep your cursor exactly where it is. 
click dynamic content and I think it was give me something more complex. There we go. Right. What it's done there is it's placed in the correct information to key to that action that we've got here. Now I've just gone and deleted it, which is like a wally. So let's just do that again. Not bad for you to see it again. Delete the outputs. Use dynamic content. Give me something more complex and click add. Pink is your friend. When it goes pink, it understands the expression. So it may look complex. If you're a bit confused, you can take this, copy it, pop it into ChatGPT or Copilot if it's decided to be nice that day and say, what does this mean? And it gives you a nice little explanation there. It retrieves the response value from the form question associated with that gobbledygook ID. If you're in the old canvas, you'll see the actual question. It's much nicer. But then it's going to say, all right, so you're likely to get something like this and it's going to replace. So first of all, remove the double quotes. So it'll take it from that to that. Really nice, show me what's happening. Second, replace any square brackets. So it'll take it from that to that. And third, you can see we've got that last bracket and then it takes that bracket out. And there we go. So it'll take that to that, which is what we want. So the art here is just explain what you don't want. Or maybe even where we've said it here, strip out these values. If you want, you could just type out what you do want. So option one, I don't know, a space, a bar, a semicolon, and get it to do that work. Let's give it a test. And now we're going to see that we've got option one and option three separated by a comma. If you don't like the format of that, all you do again is just copy it from that output and go and paste it into Copilot, into Claude, into ChatGPT and ask it for what you do want and ask for the expression that's going to help you get there. So why don't you go and give that a try? Don't be shy. Not meant to be a rhyming poem there, but there we go. Give it a go. Um, see how you get on. Do post in the comments what you're struggling with that might be a bit like this. I'm happy to try and experiment with more complex examples, but maybe break your expressions down. If you don't want it all on one line, ask ChatGPT Copilot, how do I get an expression that's going to break this in two based upon that comma? You'll be surprised what you get back. Go and give it a go, and I'll see you back next time.